Good evening. I'm Tom, Tom Kolokithas, president of the Greek chapter of Vrara, and I would like to thank you all for your participation. The Virtual Reality and Augmented Reality Association, known as Vrara, is a global industry association that focuses on fostering collaboration between companies and professionals in the VR and AR space. Vrara provides a platform for individuals and organizations involved in VR and AR technologies to connect, share knowledge, and drive the growth of the immersive technology industry. In this fast-paced world of technology, the reskilling and upskilling of students are paramount. Vrara, through its membership programs with universities, plays a pivotal role in helping prepare students for the future. By providing them with first-hand knowledge on the latest updates in immersive technologies, we believe Vrara equips students with a competitive edge as they step into their professional arena. Through these memberships, students gain insights into the industry's nuances, making them savvy professionals ready to navigate the complexities of the immersive tech business landscape. What sets Vrara apart is its components to involvement. Students, as members, are encouraged to participate in committees, connecting with other members, industry leaders, and experts. This involvement extends beyond the theoretical realm, guiding students to find their niche, their passion, and where to apply their bargaining skills in the vast landscape of immersive technologies. As members of RARA, Students don't just learn, they grow. The organization provides a nurturing environment that fosters personal and professional growth. Through mentorship, exposure to real-world projects, and networking opportunities, Vrara ensures that students evolve into the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. In conclusion, the correlation between Vrara and universities is not just about membership. It's about empowerment, empowering students to not only adapt to the future, but actually shape it. With Vrara, connect, learn, and grow mantra, the journey is not just educational, it's transformative. And with no further ado, I would like to invite Professor Avosos Tsinakos to say a few words. Good evening or good morning, depending on your time zone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the VRA AR Association via his uh, the representative, uh, Mr. Tom Kolokithas, uh, for uh, hosting uh, this event and the whole uh, VRA AR Association of Greece. Um, I think that um, this type of uh, cooperation among this well-known uh, association and the uh, IMT MSC, of the Computing Science Department of International Hellenic University is um, the first one in Greek, in Greece, I think. And uh, it's a really nice and official uh, cooperation between a master degree, an international master degree with an international organization with a common interest on, on immersive technologies. Uh, some words regarding uh, and the outline of this meeting, we decide not to base on PowerPoint presentations, but to make a more user-friendly approach on explaining what the IMT MSc is about and uh, give the floor to, let's say, to those who actively participate in this program as instructors or as students or as graduates. And we would like to make clear that um, we are trying to build an immersive community around um, these te technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, game development. And um, uh, to do this, we are providing a whole ecosystem in the International Hellenic University, not only uh, via the IMT MSc, but as you will realize, uh, you, you, have, you have the ability to continue all your studies, doing a PhD uh, later on, and even a postdoc 
if you are still interested in, after so many years involvement in researching the uh, in this kind of technologies. I would like to share my screen and uh, start discussing um, regarding the uh, IMT MSc. Few words uh, on uh, what uh, you can see right now in your um, uh, screens uh, regarding the history of uh, IMT. Uh, MSc. I don't know if someone can provide the link of the uh, MSc in the chat area. Please uh, uh, help us uh, and provide the link of the MSc. The the story behind uh, this uh, master's degree, which is an international degree provided in English, and it is uh, synchronous based uh, because we are targeting in uh, st students and participants around the world. Right now. Uh, the most, let's say, uh, far away uh, remote students that we have comes to a with a distribution from Canada to Australia. So we cover, let's say, most of the existing time zones in, uh, globally. And that's why the MSc uh, is uh, synchronous based because uh, there is no other way that we can synchronize the participation of the students. The story behind the MSc with, uh, with the first intake uh, uh, back in 2021 uh, was to try to establish a master degree that targets all the um, specifications, the, the specialities of educators, of researchers, uh, or um, professionals that they have high interest on the uh, immersive technologies. So uh, that was a really, really tough case uh, because it is very difficult to establish an MSc of such complexity and teach this kind of technologies without requiring uh, developmental skills. So for example, we would like to or have a student, someone who comes from, uh, let's say, um, philosophy. Uh, but we also would like to have someone who has uh, a background in music or in uh, English. Of course, we also have students coming from computing science. And this is a really difficult balance on how to organize all the courses to be attractive for every let's say, uh, degree that comes in this MSc. Because if it is so uh, simple uh, in the way that is uh, taught, uh, uh, people coming from computing science, maybe uh, they, they become bored because they found this MSc, they're, they're finding this MSc quite novice. Uh, or uh, let's say uh, it's not so complex uh, regarding to their computing science skills. But uh, if we make this MSc uh, very, let's say, um, complex in terms of development, uh, we may lose all those uh, researchers or professionals that have high interest on uh, these uh, technologies, but they lacking uh, developmental skills. So it was the first puzzle that we have to solve. The, the existing numbers of students, because we started from a number of uh, 18 students we raised next year up to 44, and right now we are almost 60 students participating in this uh, program. Uh, provides um, really a real uh, indicator of the success of the program. And what you are looking right now in front of your screens is the digital twin of this MSc, because this MSc uh, is based on providing skills to the students. Uh, all the courses are, um, are uh, provided through the Moodle platform, asynchronous, as uh, we already mentioned. But uh, during the courses, the participants have the ability to build skills uh, and um, visit the digital twin of uh, MSc environment. Uh, it is one of the unique uh, MSCs in Europe that have this uh, opportunity or this uh, ability to the students to 
use the same environment, uh, not only uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, study through Moodle, but also to use the metaverse in order to attend lectures. And uh, just to give you an idea, this is the, our metaverse uh, space in special, where most of the students can come visit the place. And of course, uh, they can uh, practice their own skills, have the experience how it feels like to study in the metaverse. And this is, let's say, the IMT amphitheater where someone can provide lectures or attend courses. Um, the idea behind this uh, MSc uh, was um, uh, to, to find, um, let's say, a way to provide those skills uh, to all the students coming from different uh, places and also to join forces with other universities and other researchers uh, across the globe uh, and uh, share expertise because uh, in uh, the teaching staff of the of the uh, IMT, uh, not only students coming, uh, professors coming from International Hellenic University are, are participating, but we have a, a, a team of uh, instructors from different universities, uh, from uh, Open University of UK, from Ireland, from Austria, uh, also from uh, Canada. Uh, we have many, many um, uh, uh, teachers coming from different, let's say, um, universities who join their forces with us. I think that um, MS, this kind of MSc applies to everybody who is uh, interested in uh, those technologies and um, are looking for a way to apply those uh, technologies in their own field, either to expand their knowledge or to gain professional skills at the end of the graduation. And uh, I would like to uh, pause my introduction to th this MSc and give the floor to uh, uh, Dr. Stylianos Mistakidis, who is one of the instructors. And uh, he will give us his own view uh, of the program and um, share his own experience. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Tsinakos. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to today's uh, event. As uh, Professor Tsinako said, I was, uh, I'm a researcher in the space and uh, educator uh, in dealing with the metaverse and virtual worlds, and also with immersive learning and gamification. So all of them together, and also this open and distance uh, learning. So I was aware of this master program, and uh, for first, uh, I was very impressed by the fact that, uh, as uh, Professor Tsinako said, and uh, you can find also the link here in the chat area. If you haven't, if you're not already aware, please do. So I was already aware of uh, of the, the website and of the fact that they have a, a great cast of, uh, as I said, all-star uh, faculty that are uh, teaching, and I was uh, very proud to see that. So when I was invited uh, last year to join the ranks, uh, I, I had the chance to see what this MSc is all about. So I'm going to share my uh, uh, some uh, advice with all of you in case you're interested in these technologies. First of all, if you're looking for something that is easy, and then it's no problem that and you can uh, get it and get a master's degree, don't come here. Don't consider it, forget it, go. Uh, otherwise, if you are passionate about these technologies and what you can do, how you can develop your own skills, how you can unleash your creativity, how you can go beyond what you're capable of doing. And if you're looking for opportunities to go beyond your local or national context, this is a huge opportunity for you. And how this is materialized is uh, here, for example, you can see it, uh, how this looks like. Uh, Professor Tsinakos has shown you how you can join us and we can meet all together and collaborate on uh, the metaverse. I'm going to show you also the fact that you can also take a look at some of the, uh, some of the modules, so how they look like. 
So here you can find this is the open MSC. So you can find here three modules and you can have here some idea of how that looks like in terms of what you can expect and read and uh, the materials and also the activities that uh, you're going to find here. But uh, most importantly, you will find a great flexibility to uh, continue and progress your study and individualize them and personalize them to your skills. Beyond the fact that you have a great collection of, of courses for two semesters, the third semester is a treat because you have options. First of all, some I'm involved in some of these courses and I used to say, I'm. Uh, if you want a boss fight, come and take the last course, which is mine, so you can have a real challenge. But uh, jokes aside, you have a great flexibility to continue and, and uh, studying some of the modules that are of interest to you, or you can have the opportunities to finish your degrees with something big, with something unique and important. And that is a project which is unique to your interest. And th that is an independent study, which is a first of the two choices, which is a small scale project, for example, uh, a bibliographic research on an area or even an empirical research study. So this is the one option. And the second one, which is more in, even more intriguing, is the thesis project. So with this one, you finish with a, a, with a thesis where you have the opportunity to design, develop something and also have a kind of research. And having done this for, a first, uh, for the first time, uh, I'm very happy to share with you some of, uh, of, of, this, of the results of, uh, of this one, which is here, uh, what was the uh, object. And uh, the objective of this um, thesis was an augmented reality escape room game for English language learning. So, uh, Ms. Foreopoulou, which was the, student, the MSc student who completed this thesis perfectly, she was uh, she acquired all the uh, necessary skills through the first semesters, and then coming into the thesis project, she was able to um, to design, develop this uh, this project, and then have it published after the end of her studies in a, a in a well respected and high esteemed and with a, an academic journal with impact factor uh, which is a, a great example of this is not just one msc project you do something you forget it we are great proponents of opportunity of uh, excuse me of opportunities and also of openness whatever you do is not something you do uh, you do in the course and stays in the course no we want what you do to have an impact on the world on your world uh, combined with your ambitions, your skills, uh, and uh, your capabilities to do good, to, uh, to have an impact on the world. And one of the ways you can do that, you, you can dip your toes into that by experimenting, by, uh, by playing with these, uh, and with these technologies and trying something unique, something innovative, which afterwards can be um, recognized and also can be shared with the rest of the world, making uh, a small imp impact already. So if there's something that is interest of you, we are more than happy uh, to discuss it uh, further with you. And I should say that uh, in all of this, uh, during all this process, you have a great uh, opportunity, you have great support, so you're not alone. For example, it might come up, you have the opportunity, you have a spokesperson. So whatever happens, if you have any problem, you can see Professor Ioannis Kazanidis, assistant professor. He is uh, your consultant and academic advisor. So you have uh, any problem, you have someone always to, to go to and discuss all your problems. So uh, that has been uh, my uh, experience as an instructor in the, uh, in the IMT MSc program. And uh, I'm looking forward to collaborating with some of you should you decide to take up uh, the adventure and come and join and try to become a, a graduate from the MSc, uh, of this MSc program, uh, if you can. So I'm challenging you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mr. Kedis, uh, for uh, sharing this information. I think you, uh, you share um, something that is very, very true about the program. It's a program that requires uh, effort, OK? Uh, because uh, uh, someone may think that uh, since it is a 
Um, this MSC is provided via distance. Someone can easily participate. Yes, can he, he or she can easy, part, easily participate, but uh, the workload assigned to each course, which and most of the courses are uh, project-based courses, um, really correspond to the ECTS that are associated with. Each course has 7.5 ECTS associated. That means a real uh, 7.5 workload assigned per course. Okay. Uh, one of the critical information regarding the MSc uh, is that um, you can have a taste of the uh, how the courses uh, look like. I have provided the link of the Open uh, IMT MSc uh, option in the chat. And uh, thank you, Dr. Mr. Kidis, for mentioning this. Uh, also, I have to uh, highlight that this MSc provides um, pedagogical and didactical um, uh, let's say, approval uh, competencies for someone who is looking for this certification as well. So um, I would like to share the floor with two of our students uh, here that have uh, worked in different uh, areas of the IMT. And also, uh, they actively participated in uh, research proposals because as I mentioned, this MSc is, let's say, the first step towards this community that we are trying to build, this ecosystem of researchers dealing with studies and research regarding immersive technologies. So we are trying to have most of, most, I can say many of our students as graduates or during their studies involved in research projects, as uh, uh, Ms. Risa Lazo, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Haralambos Kapakis and uh, Konstantinos Anastasiou, you will find out later on uh, the, the success story of uh, Dimostenis Liguras, uh, who, who is also a graduate from the uh, IMT MSc. So um, let's say uh, what we are trying to do is not to attract people only to uh, become, let's say, graduate from the IMT uh, MSD. We are trying to build a community. Okay, so uh, I will share the floor with uh, Konstantinos Anastasiou, uh, who is one of our students of the IMT MSc. He's nearly to graduate uh, the IMT, so he can uh, share his experience uh, studying in the IMT. Thank you, Professor Tsinakos. I am Konstantinos Anastasiou. Uh, in the last year, I'm a full-time student at the, uh, the master program. I would start by sharing some of my experiences uh, of the master program. Uh, first of all, I would, uh, I would like to say, as uh, Professor Tsinako said earlier, uh, that um, it is not necessary to, uh, to be at, uh, from a computer science field uh, to complete this master program. Uh, I believe that um, Immersive technologies are technologies that can be applied easily almost everywhere, and they are very interesting and fun technologies to learn. I have to say that by this master program is constructed in such a way that you will you will receive the knowledge to to build your own researches. This is my first master program, and. I have to say that I learned to research in such a way and I made my first uh, publication with a collaboration uh, with the teachers of the master program. Uh, furthermore, uh, I have uh, I have taken part in uh, research pro 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 uh, projects <clears throat> and I have, uh, I have been a part of the team that uh, constructed this uh, IMT uh, space at the um, spatial.io where it is actually a space where the or all students can share uh, uh, can share their assignments, uh, but also take part at uh, meetings and um, collaborate with uh, each other, but also with the professors. Um, in this space, we can find uh, many of, uh, the, of the students' uh, assignments in the virtual environments uh, in the virtual environment. 
Uh, I would share with you, uh, I will say with you uh, our mine uh, assignment that uh, it was uh, for, a, for a course of the master program that I created uh, at the past semester. So you will, uh, you will take a look at uh, what you can build from and uh, what you can learn from this master program. Okay, this is actually um, a place uh, for, for about the mythology, the Greek mythology. The player is teleported in a, in a place where he can see and interact with uh, some of the gods. He's a type of a mini game. You can uh, interact with the god and take uh, their items. I'm not going to show you everything because it would, it would be a very much uh, time consuming. Um, I'll continue with, uh, with the second part of this assignment. This is the labyrinth of the Minotaur, as everyone knows, of the Greek mythology. You can complete it by completing some, some tasks. And the last part, uh, I'm, uh, I'm speed running this right now because uh, I don't have uh, much uh, this time to show it um, the full uh, experience. But, uh, but I believe that uh, you can, uh, you have an idea about what uh, you can do following this master program. This is the Odyssey trip. I'm going to teleport a bit because the ship will take forever to reach the first island. Here you can listen to the siren song. Here you can blind the, the cyclops and learn, of course, some informations. And the Kirki with the pigs you can transform the pigs to humans. Okay, and this is uh, one of our assignment. Um, I am coming from the computer science uh, field, so I believe that um, I had the chance to to develop my uh, to to improve my developer my developing skills by building such environments but not on, but not only in the spatial io but uh, using uh, several platforms for uh, many of the assignments uh, using uh, tools and um, and many other platforms uh, because i believe that uh, um, if you are in uh, this master program you could uh, you could use uh, anything that you got to comp to to implement these technologies um, this is all I have to I have to say. Uh, Hararabos will continue by sharing some of our external uh, research programs, uh, pro, uh, projects that we had uh, the opportunity to work uh, for, from the IMT master program. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kostandina, for uh, uh, demonstrating what you did as part of an assignment within one of the courses. Okay. So that was, that was part of the project that you did for one of your courses. Uh, so uh, if you would like to stop sharing your screen, and uh, uh, I would like to give the floor uh, to uh, Mr. Kostadinos Haralabos Kapakis. Uh, Haralabos, the floor is yours, and uh, you can share your own experience through the IMT MSc. And uh, just to uh, inform you, those two students come from computing science, but we also have graduates from other degrees just to prove that this MSc applies to everybody. Uh, Haralambe, your floor is yours. Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Haralambe Skapagis, and I'm also currently studying at the MSc. And yes, as Mr. Tsinakos has already said, uh, we come from a computing background, so what we specialize in is developer is in development, but uh, also we got to see some other cool assignments from people who are in other fields, such as history, some from philosophy and music, and they also create their own unique projects. But uh, the thing that I'm going to show you now is not part of a, a school assignment, but uh, from a real life project that we got to collaborate with the cybercrime division uh, from the, the official cybercrime division from the police department. 
Um, this was a very unique experience for us because we actually got to apply some of our knowledge and some of our specialty fields in the field in a project that was not shown just as a simple assignment, but it was presented to schools and to educate st real life students. So um, I'm going to take the share screen for a bit and I'm going to show you that project. Uh -huh. Um, the project was developed uh, for both the WebGL platform so that anyone can check it out from their house. Uh, you can just play it on any browser as long as they have uh, HTML support. And uh, also, uh, since we're an immersive uh, applications uh, MSc, we have also developed it for uh, VR support by using the Oculus 2 Quest, uh, Quest 2 uh, device. I'm going to share the link later so that anyone that has the device can check, can download the APK and install it. We also have instructions for anyone that's unfamiliar with this technology, but you should definitely try it. It's really, it's really interesting. Haralambe, uh, just a comment that uh, since it was uh, uh, built for the Greek cybercrime uh, yeah. unit, excuse us, but all the uh, titles no. are in Greek. Yeah, so, the content is yeah. uh, for the Greek audience. <laughs> so, yeah. so everything will sound Greek to you from now yeah. on. <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, okay, I will share some details later on. Okay, so, but you can be more descriptive regarding what's happening in uh, Haram uh, through the... Yeah, program. obviously. Um, so what we wanted to create was an immersive experience where uh, students will play. So we wanted to give them... a some options to, to, to gamify the whole experience. We didn't just want them to give them a, a, just something that they can see and go away. We want them to interact with the environment. So for example, one of the first choices that they're going to have to make is to choose the guide that they're going to have to play the game with. For example, now I'm going to go with Maria, the female instructor. Also, in case uh, some people haven't used the technology before and they want to learn the controls uh, or the basic instructions and all that, they can either play the tutorial. Right now we're going to skip that for time's sake. And uh, we're going to go on to the first environment. The basic concept that we wanted to develop uh, was an academy of sorts. We wanted to educate the students on safety uh, on the internet and all of the dangers that can exist and how to deal with them. So the basic concept was to, to create this school where, uh, as you can see, we have collaborated with the police. So we, we created it like a police academy. Σε αυτό το σημείο μπορείς να μπεις μέσα στο κτίριο πατώντας πάνω στην πόρτα και στο εσωτερικό θα συνεχίσεις την εκπαίδευσή σου πάνω στη διαδικτυακή ασφάλεια. The the guide is voiced uh, from a text to speech device obviously and um, it's it will act as a as a guide throughout all of the different chapters and going to give information to the students as they play the game and as they progress through the stages. Καλώς ήρθες. Επισκέψου ένα δωμάτιο. Now, the, Πάρε το παιδί απαντώντα τι ερωτήσει και στη συνέχεια μπορεί να εξερευνήσει με τον ίδιο τρόπο τα υπόλοιπα δωμάτια. Uh, Haralabe, I don't know, maybe it's a good idea to uh, mute the game sound so we can hear yeah, only can your... That. Okay. Basically, the, uh, whenever I talk to the NPC, it's going to give me some information. Like for now, if I click on them, I can ask them about the specific topic, like what's, uh, the, what do you have to do when you see something weird on the internet? And it's going to keep talking about that subject and provide information. Oh, also, I have to mention that all of the information was given to us by the cybercrime division. It's from their experts over there. And uh, that's how we developed uh, all of the different questions and all the content over here. Now, uh, since we went to make it a game, we gave the player some objectives for every room in order to gain the key. Now, the video is optional in this room, so it's already checked out. But we have also created a quiz over here. Uh, the quiz is every time it's randomized. It, it, it includes like 15 different questions that you know, that are in a different that are in a pool, and each time we draw around two or three questions. So each, each student it's, it's not going to get the same things. It's it's always it's always going to be randomized. Now, um, once I'm once I complete the the quiz, I'm really good at this. I already know everything. <laughs> I'm going to receive my first key, you know, and I have completed the first chapter. Now, 
the the order the progression in the game happens with the keys which unlock the different uh, areas in the whole building like for example you have to gather five keys to go to the upper floor and uh, this is how we want to make it uh, like an open world kind of situation where you have to choose the, whatever room you want to go you can take them in any order and lock the different rooms in any uh, in any way that you want uh, also the npc is going to follow me no matter where room I go so that uh, it's always available for me to ask it any questions that I want. And if it comes over here, I can ask it about grooming, which is the, this chapter. And also we have an educational video over here. This video was also provided by the Cybercrime Division. I'm not going to watch the entire thing. I'm just going to complete the second objective. Now, in case I get something wrong, I get a buzzer. You can hear it right now. And uh, uh, that's the way that we we give some feedback to the students in order to realize if they did something correct or wrong. Now, now that I have finished the second chapter, it's telling me that I have unlocked a new area. And if I follow the yellow line, it's going to guide me to the next objective. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the last chapter that we're going to see, which are like the, the prototypes for, uh, inter, inter, for the internet. And now we're going to finish the, the third room. And the objective is finished. I get the final key. And now for the final part, we have created kind of like a, a ceremony, you know, like you got your degree on uh, internet safety. And we're going to go to that ceremony right there where we're going to be given our degree. Well, you can hear the ABC, but right now it's congratulating for us uh, completing the whole course. And uh, every student, after they finish the, 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 the whole course, they will be able to write their own name. For example, now I'm going to write mine. And we will create their own little I uh, agree with their name and a congratulatory statement from us and from the cybercrime division. And you should this doesn't actually give the full power of the project since it's in a browser. You should definitely check it out for VR if you have the if you have a compatible device. It's it's a really good project that really uh, elevated our skills to the next level because we got to work with other specialists in the subject and we got good some real life uh, experience. Um, this is the whole project that I saw. If if you want to move on, we can. Thank you, Paralympus, uh, for this really for nice, uh, let's see, uh, the tutorial of uh, this project. Um, we have to say that uh, this project um, is the official, let's say, demonstration of a uh, Greek cybercrime unit. Uh, they are on us with uh, an MOU because we are the only team working closely with them right now and um, first time was uh, introduced to the audience during uh, this September the International Affair of Thessaloniki in Greece and right now the official opening of these games because there are two games uh, another game uh, with augmented reality uh, board game system developed by uh, Dimitris Fjaras uh, with is another graduate, almost graduate of the IMT MSC project and uh, colleagues. Uh, we developed a board game uh, enriched uh, with uh, augmented reality opportunities. This game um, address uh, same uh, issues, but for students between the age of eight to 12 years old. So uh, the official presentation of both applications of those both games, uh, the official opening, will be held uh, in uh, 6th of uh, February in Athens in the official ceremony of cybercrime unit uh, for the safety uh, uh, on uh, the internet. I would like to uh, pass the floor to Ms. Risa Lazo, who is our first graduate from the IMT MSc. And uh, she graduated with uh, distinction. Uh, and uh, she will uh, share her own point of view regarding the studies, but also uh, uh, Ms. Risalazo has uh, proceeded uh, to take the challenge to do a PhD on immersive technologies. 
uh, Risa, the floor is yours and you can share uh, your own story. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Professor Tsunagos, for introducing me and special thanks to the VRAR Association for the invitation to present my work. Uh, as Professor Tsunakos has already mentioned, uh, my name is Chris Laja. I'm an English language educator, so I don't come from the IT studies. Uh, I am, though, an IMT alumna, one of the first ones uh, during the first uh, offering of the program. And at present, I am pursuing my uh, doctoral degree. Um, my uh, research uh, main aim is to investigate whether technology-enhanced learning um, can uh, uh, facilitate digital and media literacy skills enhancement in education through an interdisciplinary approach, thus be achieved across disciplines. Uh, it focuses on secondary and tertiary education on a transnational level, thus uh, diverse sociocultural demographics and background. My research field is how critical digital and media literacy skills can be achieved and enhanced according to the digital competence framework levels for digital proficiency, uh, leveraging novel technologies such as AR and VR, and especially multi-user virtual, virtual environments across disciplines in the curriculum uh, for a holistic, let's say, uh, skill and competence development. Uh, given the internationalization of modern education, uh, English is the medium of instruction that, according to uh, CLIL, that is Content and Language Integrated Learning for Secondary Education, uh, students uh, learn through English and through a, a EMI for tertiary education. Uh, regarding the design of my uh, research, uh, in an attempt to investigate the possibility of uh, digital proficiency skills building, I opt for a participatory culture of uh, immersive content consumption and creation uh, through participants' collaborative work uh, that is based on evaluation cr criteria that I have created for pilot testing in micro-teaching sessions that provide peer evaluation of the new content they create. A special emphasis is given on dual coding opportunities as dictated by the UDL principles for inclusive educational practices. I have to mention here that the IMT program provided me uh, with both the practical skills as well as the theoretical background to design my PhD study roadmap so as to evaluate quality of user experience. As such, it examines the user's accessibility to the digital resources, providing comfort of use, moving to the ability to uh, uh, interpret, deconstruct multimedia content and evaluate its usefulness, and then moving on to higher levels that involve the creativity level, uh, that is the delight that a user may feel while creating something that is the produce its content, and moving on to transcendence, uh, that is become an active uh, self-actualization of uh, uh, the actor in the digital world. Uh, moving on, I have to mention here that uh, there is much research and literature uh, regarding the instructional design for immersive technologies, which is of high importance. This needs to be uh, thoroughly examined as it should provide inclusive learning experiences, creating schemata that enhance coding and opportunities for optimizing cognitive load. Uh, a sample of uh, such uh, immersive content creation has already been uh, introduced to you through the IMT uh, space. And uh, you can uh, here you can also explore uh, at your own time. There are posters that decorate the walls, which include uh, QR codes with uh, videos and links to the platforms so that you can uh, investigate and explore the spaces that we have already created, all students have created there. And this is also part of my research work. And the bubbles, as uh, Harald Labos and uh, Konstantinos have already mentioned and showed you a small sample of that, uh, are the uh, collaborative work of last year's students that they have uh, provided us with the opportunity to have peer evaluation and micro-teaching sessions. 
So uh, this background is of uh, high school learners using VR headsets to explore immersive spaces for educational purposes. Uh, my so far study has uh, actually, and findings have actually uh, introduced the CIT literacy framework that is the critical immersive triggered literacy, uh, according to which uh, meaningful learning instances can be achieved through immersive technologies, thus accelerating the learning process and enhancing the internalization of knowledge through multisensory uh, experiences. And on another level, the development of digital attention skills so that students can cope with information overload and digital distraction and diminish the obstacles that may disorientate them from achieving cognitive effectiveness. Uh, here there are some more uh, snapshots from uh, students getting acquainted with novel technologies while experiencing VR environments for learning purposes. And my PhD progress and recognition of my academic so far, a study so far uh, involves uh, presentations in international conferences, funded research and keynote presentations in uh, Erasmus projects. I am a proctor at IMTC3 immersive software and IMTC7 fundamentals for virtual reality, the coordinator and trainer of the communitized project in Southeastern Europe, as well as being elected as the vice president of the International Association for Branded Learning, publications in proceedings, books, chapters, papers, and academic journals. Uh, I have uh, received the best PhD uh, paper and presentation at the International Conference on e-learning 2022 last year in the United Kingdom. And the second UNESCO Global uh, Mill Alliance Awards in 2022 for my research work gold medal for innovation in language learning from ELT Excellence Awards and gold medal for innovation in education, Education Leaders Awards 2022. Last but not least, I am an AU Distinguished Alumni Award 2023 from Canada. Uh, just before uh, completing my and finishing my presentation, I would like to share with you uh, the list of publications for years 2022 and 2023 uh, along with a huge thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you, Krisa, for uh, this informative presentation. You skipped the section of, uh, uh, let's say, Parania that you were confronted with completing <laughs> the IMT MSc. In, in one year. <laughs> in one year, because it was quite stressful for you because you were... <laughs> I, I would I would like to confess that you are a full time mother, a full time profession professional, a full time student, and a full time researcher at the same time. So you combine four different heavy duties uh, under uh, a year, and you manage to do such a quality qualitative uh, work. If uh, I may, Professor Tsinakos, I would like to share here that uh, uh, there is flexibility regarding the, the IMT studies. First of all, uh, there is flexibility in options that you have to take if you do not have uh, an IT background so as to uh, have your uh, knowledge applied, what, whatever you learn and what skills you acquire can be applied to your own professional discipline and context. So this was a big advantage for me. So, and for everybody else who comes from different uh, disciplines, and it is not just a coding uh, skills building. Thank you very much. Uh, I would I would share some uh, tips on the program and uh, how someone who is interested uh, how he or she can join uh, the, uh, this ecosystem. And uh, thanks to the VR AR Association uh, providing this communication channel with uh, all of you that uh, participate right now, you're participating. Uh, I would like to uh, pass the floor to Dimosthenis Liguras. Uh, Dimosthenis uh, has just graduated from the IMT MSc uh, this uh, September, and uh, he belongs to the second intake of the IMT MSc. And he continues his own studies, uh, pursuing a PhD degree 
uh, he didn't learn from the example of Krisa, so he would like to <laughs> explore his own, uh, let's say, uh, abilities on doing a PhD. Uh, but uh, we have to uh, highlight that uh, uh, it's really a, a success for us when we see our students and our graduates to continue their professional development, either by setting up uh, um, SMEs, uh, enterprises, or uh, participating in uh, uh, projects uh, like uh, Chris Alazu, like uh, Ms. Angeliki Voreopoulou, uh, Dimos Tenis, and uh, Haralambos, uh, also, uh, Many, many students that have uh, Constantinos Anastasiou and many other students of ours participating at the same time in projects. Uh, Dimostenis, the floor is yours to uh, give your view as a newcomer to the uh, PhD degrees and newcomer and uh, the most fresh uh, one who has uh, completed the IMT MSc, as uh, a fresh graduate, I mean. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tsinagos. Thank you for this wonderful uh, event, uh, VRAR Association. Good evening, uh, everyone. My name is Dimosenis Liguras, and I'm an occupational therapist. So you can understand for, uh, that I, become, uh, I come from a different, uh, totally different uh, field. I have successfully attended the IMP MSc program, and I'm currently a PhD student focusing on the role of immersive virtual reality and the rehabilitation of stroke patients. Today, I'm excited to share with you my journey from the MSc program to my current research in this fascinating field. To set the stage, let's go back to my MSc program. During my time in the MSc, I underwent significant personal and professional development. I acquired crucial skills and knowledge that laid the foundation for my current research. The program was instrumental in shaping my understanding of immersive technologies. One of the key aspects emphasized in the MSc program was the international collaboration. I had the privilege of engaging with researchers and institutions from around the world. This global perspective enriched me and enriched my understanding of uh, uh, immersive technologies and their varied applications. Also in the field of IMT, collaboration is the key. Researchers from diverse backgrounds come together to combine their expertise. For example, a computer scientist might collaborate with a healthcare profession, professional to develop a virtual reality application for medical training or patient, uh, patient rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the freedom to choose topics for assignments in each course gave me the opportunity to explore the use of immersive technologies in different areas of medicine, such as using these technologies for rehabilitation or integrating them into the teaching of basic medical courses, such as anatomy. Consequently, the experiences and knowledge gained uh, during my MSc study, studies significantly influenced my decision to pursue further research. As an occupational therapist with clinical experience in the field of rehabilitation of people with stroke, all the knowledge that I gained after completing my master's degree led me to explore the potential of immersive VR in stroke rehabilitation. More specifically, my PhD research focuses on understanding the role of immersive virtual reality in restoring functionality in stroke patients in the chronic phase of rehabilitation. With regard uh, to the rehabilitation of a person with a stroke, the following facts apply. Initially, rehabilitation uh, therapy alone, physical or occupational therapy, uh, may not be fully effective in regaining function in patients in the chronic phase. Therefore, high-intensity therapy, including games, is needed to induce changes in brain neuroplasticity and promote motor recovery after stroke. Also, on the one hand, it is often not easy for many patients to visit rehabilitation centers either due to financial difficulties and lack of time or geographical constraints. On the other hand, providing more therapy is considered cost inefficient in terms of staffing from rehabilitation centers. Furthermore, given the social challenges patients face, effective interventions that take into account the quality of individual social experiences are needed. 
Additionally, patients with impaired motor control uh, face limitations in benefiting from current virtual reality tools given their limited capacity for purposeful motor actions, limited rates of motion, pain, and fatigue. So the main person of this PhD research is the development of a tool which combines the use of a virtual reality headset, artificial intelligence uh, reinforcement learning, and therapeutic exercises for the rehabilitation of the hemiplegic upper lip stroke patients through a mixed automated telerehabilitation procedure and to uh, investigate the degree of effectiveness of this tool. While it's still early in, the, uh, in my PhD journey, I'm currently working on the first study, which concerns the cross-cultural adaptation of the questionnaire USEC, a short questionnaire for satisfaction evaluation of virtual rehabilitation systems in Greek, uh, in the context of the rehabilitation of people with neurological disorders using the MetaOculus uh, VR headset, as well testing the validity and reliability of the Greek version. The research aims to contribute valuable insights into the aspects of user satisfaction and usability with virtual reality-based rehabilitation programs for people with neurological disorders in the Greek population. As I look to the future, I'm excited about the possibilities that my research holds. I look forward to further exploration and collaboration. Thank you for your time today. Uh, thank you, Demosthenes, and uh, for this very complex but also very interesting PhD topic that we uh, started together and we are starting to explore how we can help people and patients coming uh, through these quite unfortunate uh, cases of a stroke. We have to say that with us uh, in this uh, uh, PhD topic, we have the collaboration of to, to distinguished uh, neural science uh, doctors, uh, Dr. Uh, Seimenis, Ioannis Seimenis, and uh, Dr. Vadikolias. Uh, so uh, this uh, team of uh, supervisors join forces in order to make the best of academic quality of your PhD research. Uh, prior of initiating the question and answer studies, I would like to pass the floor to uh, Mr. Kolokithas to give us a short uh that wasn't a surprise for you but i would like to give us uh, a short hint uh, for our audience why vra association is so important for us this kind of collaboration and i was i would like you to mention uh, what you are providing for uh, the imt students and what are the plans for uh, let's say uh, enhancing uh, our uh, courses with uh, this provision of uh, VR headsets. So the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Kolokithas. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you all for your wonderful presentations. Uh, it seems to me that if somebody is looking for a challenge or an opportunity to help fight cybercrime, there's a, a strong community about immersive technologies at the IMT master's program. And uh, personally, I believe that there's a huge potential to play an instrumental uh, role into the industry. Uh, but coming back to you, Professor, in your question, um, uh, I, I, I mentioned it uh, in my introduction, but let, let's uh, get a little bit more focused saying that, um, like, uh, first of all, let, I'll, I'll approach it from a tangible uh, approach. So they don't have to pay. <laughs> so the, I think that is important. Sometimes we just, you know, uh, keep it aside, but you know, uh, students uh, they, they need support, as we say. So uh, through these collaborations, because we are a member-based uh, uh, organization, so that they, they don't have to pay the fee, so they get in free. Uh, and the most important is that they get all the benefits as the paid members. Uh, and what that means is uh, they have access through the Slack channels direct access to all the other members around the world, which is which are thousands. And they could be speaking with the CEO of a company, they could be speaking with a product developer of a company. Um, there's so much huge potential into these communication channels that when you have a question, you have even an idea and uh, you just want to pitch it and uh, you, you need some feedback, you know, because you come from, uh, as Chrisa said, 
a diverse uh, professional background and you're just doing a, a master's program just to move on with your career you you can reach out to actual people uh and then uh if, if that is not enough you can actually get in a committee <laughs> so we have like more than 20 committees uh from from aerospace to storytelling and then you they they go bi-weekly into uh sessions and then you can get in as a student and then you can ask for them for their help you can pitch your idea you can pitch whatever you want and or just be there and watch how the industry evolves uh which is true knowledge uh, you don't have to wait for information to come to you you don't have to wait for an annual meeting so that you you get some information on how the industry goes or where the world is going through the perspective of immersive technologies. I'm just generalizing now. Uh, but you have, you have the opportunity to go there. Uh, apart from that, in terms of academia, because uh, this, is, this is one of the very specific collaborations that we have, but there's so many other collaborations with universities around Europe, uh, uh, the US as well. And of course, as you can understand, you know, throughout this collaboration, there's some researches that uh, we have been doing. So there's a lot of information in our uh, cloud space where you get access. So there's so many reports that could help into uh, research programs uh, that uh, one, um, like Demosthenes, for example, or FISA, uh, is, is trying to uh, evolve in their careers. Uh, so I would like, in terms of uh, respect to our time, like hold it there and uh, just give another, give another opportunity that says, you can also participate into other events rather than our local events, because this is a global community um, where you can go into our conventions or other uh, events happening into other chapters and then also present or be a speaker. So there's so many opportunities, but also keep in mind uh, what we say in Vrara is um, our organization is a gym, not a spa. And as you can all understand, uh, because this is recorded and maybe somebody could, could hear this in the future. Um, you go to the gym, you know, you not get treated. So I think the IMT and Brada are getting, uh, well, they're getting along so well because the IMT feels like a gym as well, <laughs> not a spa. Uh, <laughs> as the professor earlier mentioned, you know, you, you have to be That's absolutely true. Talent. So back to you, professor. Hopefully I answered. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I would like to share my screen and uh, uh, give a couple of information and then I will initiate the question and answer uh, session. Um, this is the ITMA lab. This is the uh, research laboratory established in the computing science department of International Hellenic University. Uh, everyone who is uh, interested uh, to join uh, this team or uh, explore all the products and the projects we are doing on immersive technologies. This is the research area, the kickoff uh, point. So uh, I've already posted the link in the chat. So you can find here most of our projects and the products that uh, we have implemented. And also I would like to go back to the MSC uh, homepage. For uh, those of uh, the attendees who would like to take to have a taste of the uh, IMT, uh, they can do it for free, uh, just clicking the Open IMT uh, option, and you can uh, explore how uh, IMT courses uh, look like. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Kidis has already demonstrated this. And um, also, I would like to inform you that you have three different options of joining IMT MSc. One is as a full-time student, if you would like to take an MSc in uh, a year, you have the option of uh, two, two years uh, participation in the MSc as a part-time student. And if you don't, would like, uh, let's say, and the, of course you can shift from one mode to another mode if you like. And yeah, if you still have some hesitations, uh, you can take one or two courses as a non-program student. That means that uh, you can be registered to a specific course of the uh, first semester and a specific course to the second semester, and uh, you are or just take only one course. And you are gonna if you succeed 
to this uh, course, you are awarded the ECTS, so you can transfer those ECTS later on to another master's degree, or you can continue to the uh, MSc. And uh, coming to this uh, point, I would like to say that uh, if you are interested in applying for uh, the MSc because we are just initiated our winter uh, some, uh, part of uh, registration, Early access of the courses are uh, happening on the uh, 5th of February and uh, I think uh, a bit later or more or less uh, between 5th and 10th of February. Please, for those who would like to receive a generous, let's say, uh, reductions of the fees uh, as members of the VRA uh, AR Association attendees, please check this uh, box that you come through the IMT event. Uh, that uh, is already happening right now. So you're going to have a generous reduction on the fees uh, for the first 15 applications that they're going to receive uh, in our uh, registration process. So I will stop here uh, and I will uh, open the floor to any uh, question and uh, that uh, the audience have. And uh, you can activate your microphone if you would like uh, to take the floor please proceed or uh, if there is a, uh, some if there are some questions already in the question and answer area please let me know no questions so far uh, if scroll, if I'm, I think that scrolling up a little bit, I, I, I saw a question regarding the the program. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, you can take the, you can activate your microphone and uh, ask your question if you would like. Okay, I don't know why. Okay, uh, let's check if uh, attendees have the opportunity to activate the microphone, if that's okay, if, uh, or it's just, uh, just happening for you only. Uh, in the meantime, I would say that uh, no uh, programming skills are required. Uh, we are teaching those skills um, through a very unique, let's say, pedagogical framework so everybody who is interested in those kind of technologies have the ability to build upon uh, projects and uh, uh, also... Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Yes. I'm sorry, now I have given the access to, my, to open my microphone, so thank you for that. Uh, first of all, congratulations for all the presentations that we have seen today. It's truly amazing. And congratulations for the program. Um, my question is, uh, we have seen that uh, VR and uh, the Metaverse methodology is a game changer in various industries. Uh, my, my question goes to the rehabilitation uh, case that uh, I've seen from Mr. Demosthenes Liguras. Uh, you mentioned rehabilitation about uh, stroke and uh, I think uh, that and pain management, if I'm correct. Uh, for VR in rehabilitation, uh, do we need just to have some trigger points like uh, to the patient or the subject to have some kind of movement or we can uh, discuss cases that uh, we lack completely of movement? That's my question. Yes, I think the mo I can pass the floor to the Postenis to answer yes. this question. Uh, yes, uh, we have to, uh, the, from the patient to have uh, uh, movement in order to use the VR uh, system. Uh, but uh, this is the limitation for the VR system uh, in this field. So uh, in this PhD, we are trying to find uh, the way uh, uh, the way that uh, one patient who can uh, move uh, his hand in a, in a, uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't have uh, a good range of motion of uh, the arm uh, function, uh, so we can uh, um, uh, make. A... I can't uh, say this in English. Um, 
προσαρμογή. Ε, adjustment. Adjustment, adjustment to face. Sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any any additional question? Uh, I don't know if the technical team has come across uh, another question that uh, remains unanswered. Scrolling up and down the uh, I've seen from uh, Dr. Rebecca. I don't know if she is still among the participants and if she would like to to take the microphone and ask the question. Uh, if not, uh, I have to say that uh, we are not uh, on... Uh, okay, uh, are students required to produce some type of virtual experiences or they can focus on theoretical uh, uh, research. No, no. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the, what is the real essence of this uh, IMT MSc is that they have the opportunity to build their own experience, to, to build their own projects and according to their background. Uh, so to adjust uh, those technologies, the benefits of those technologies, adjust them to what they really are interesting on. Okay, so uh, you, they can customize those technologies according to their background. So that's why, uh, let's say, uh, the participants here are coming from different backgrounds. And there are many more students in the IMT MSc coming from a huge variety of backgrounds. And this is the proof that this degree really serves its uh, purpose, uh, its objective, okay? That is applicable to everybody. So if you have more questions regarding uh, the program, explore our website or send me an email. So uh, I think that uh, it will be quite uh, good to discuss in more detail. Uh, sorry um, for interrupting, one last question. Um... So we've seen some different uh, examples in uh, Metaverse experience and VR experience uh, from your from the students and uh, uh, presentees. And I would like to ask if uh, in the program uh, you said earlier in the beginning that the thesis uh, can be written in a free kind of uh, subject, so the student can choose uh, the approach that you will follow in his thesis. Uh Typically, by the end of the two semesters, uh, the uh, winter and the, uh, let's say, uh, spring semester, there is a bunch of uh, topics uh, announced by the supervisors. And of course, if a student has his own or her own idea, this idea can be proposed and uh, can be discussed with some of the professors. And if it can stand as a thesis or as an independent study, then we can do it. But we have to keep, let's say, the academic quality of the proposed thesis and independent studies, because what somebody proposes as an independent study can be so complex that it can stand as a, as a thesis. Okay, so that's why we examine this uh, suggestion and then we come back and see uh, how it can be uh, organized. But uh, we are open in ideas coming from our students because this master is happening for the students, not for the teachers. Okay. And I have to mention that the fees of this MSc has nothing to do with the fees around <laughs> other similar uh, degrees. And the reason is not that uh, we have a low quality of studies is that we would like to make accessible this kind of technologies to different uh, socioeconomic, uh, let's say, uh, countries uh, and students that do not have this amount of money to pay for uh, very, very expensive studies. So it's like 
a more, uh, let's say, uh, philosophical approach that we have to help students to improve their uh, knowledge and skills. Okay. Yes, I have to have to recognize the part that you said about the fees because um, it's uh, the project that we've seen uh, were truly amazing and the fees related to uh, like NVIDIA workshops about uh, Metaverse on the VR are extremely different and I've seen uh, same quality of uh, projects uh, here now presented and uh, I'm truly amazed by that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, our best ad advertisement is the, our graduates and the, the, what they are doing after the MSc, not only during the MSc. And that uh, the, the, fa the fact that we are trusted by so many companies, and of course, VRAR Association is one of the uh, huge, let's say, stakeholders, uh, the, the big stakeholders that invest on us. Uh, if you explore the IMT network, you will find other uh, 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 companies they are like e-learning industry uh, the Microsoft because we got an award from Microsoft as well for our, because we built the first space in VR uh, alt VR space from Microsoft uh, unfortunately this uh, uh, was ended uh, a year ago but we have a lot of uh, uh, collaborative organizations association universities with us Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, if there are uh, if there are additional questions, I can answer them, or, or the panelists can answer them. Otherwise, I will pass the floor to uh, Mr. Kolokithas to close up the session huh? because I think we ran out of time, but uh, it was worth it. Mr. Kolokithas, the floor is yours. Yeah, I think I think this has been a very interesting evening. Uh, uh, everybody's here and uh, I would like to thank you once more. I've shared into our chat uh, a LinkedIn uh, URL and uh, and this is the last thing that I would like to share. Uh, on March 21st, we're having the European version of our global summit. We call it the Best of Europe XR AI Immersive Tech. Um, and I would like to invite you to join us uh, to this, to this uh, digital event uh, on uh, our RARA Europe Summit. Uh, it will be uh, on the 21st, as I said. And um, of course, if uh, somebody from our audience is interested in to speak, sponsor, uh, they can just uh, email us directly and I will try to guide them. Uh, usually our events bring together thousands of people key leaders and um, innovators in the immersive tech space in Europe, um, which is very interesting. That's why we have this distinction from the US. So we can we can uh, get into the scope and we're offering unique insights, perspectives on the latest developments in, in the industry. So please uh, join us. This is a, a free event and uh, get uh, an idea of the best and the brightest into the VR and AR and all the other cutting edge technologies that are shaping the future of this digital world that uh, we are all somehow participating. Once again, I would like to thank all the technicians behind uh, the screens and uh, wherever they are in the world helping us uh, create this event. And of course, our speakers and uh, lastly, but most importantly, you, uh, Professor uh, Abus Tsinakos, who is an inspiration to me and uh, to all the work that we're trying to do into this industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Stay Bye. in touch.